All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the QRC Outlaw Car build. It is now time for one of the most important parts of this build. It is the rear axle. So we're going to come over here to our uh, man in charge here, Brandon Lachance. We've got all of our parts and our pieces here and our tools. Brandon, take us through what we need for this. All right, first step, we're going to overview tools needed to assemble the rear axle. We're going to start with a half-inch impact, um, and then we'll use some kind of cutting tool, hacksaw, or uh, air cutter. Uh, two nine sixteenths wrenches, quarter inch uh, Allen, three sixteenths Allen, and a five thirty second Allen, as well as a seven sixteenths wrench. Sometimes you might need the flathead screwdriver for persuasion, and then some snap ring pliers. So, uh, to go over the parts in your rear axle assembly, you'll have a right side hanger, a left side hanger with the caliper bracket. Uh, bolts to go to fix the hanger to the frame, uh, two rear bearings, a seven inch brake rotor for an open, uh, brake floater kit, excuse me, a four, four bolt hub for the rotor, as well as a four bolt hub for the sprocket, two double lock hubs, rear caliper, uh, Two in, or two, uh, excuse me, quarter, inch and a quarter collar locks, as well as bolts to uh, attach the caliper to the mount, and then uh, one of each length keyways, and then your snap ring and an upgrade rear axle spacers, as well as the axle. All right, let's get this thing in. All right, Brandon, so we've got all the parts and pieces. We got a little bit of work to do before we can throw this thing together, right? Yeah, before we begin, we'll do some minor bench building before we go to the frame. So we'll start with the brake rotor as well as the four bolt hub and the brake floater kit. So we will go rotor this way as well as hub this way. Attach it like so. We'll drop all of our shoulder bolts. And what exactly does this brake floater kit do for people uh, that don't know? You know, these axles have a lot of play in them as we are turning left. So it just puts a lot of pressure on. So it just allows some floating um, on these springs between uh, within the caliper so that you don't necessarily hang up the brakes if anything goes wrong or if the axle moves while racing. Okay. So pretty simple stuff here, just making sure that spring is on that side of the brake rotor. That's actually a seven inch brake rotor. We have two options here at QRC, a seven or a six inch, but this customer opted for the seven inch brake rotor. We'll take a 532nd Allen and a 716th wrench and just slightly snug those up. A little bit of a storm in the Red Bluff area this afternoon. And then next piece that will require uh, minimal bench building is we'll see the hanger and we'll look at the back side of the cassette is you see these two grooves right here. Simply take the bearing, drop it in like so, and then turn and ready for installation on the frame. Okay, and those are the ceramic bearings, right? Yes, there are two options. You can go with the Burris ceramics as well as just the standard bearing. And in this car, we are using the Burris ceramics. All right, so we've got our prep work done and I think we're ready to start putting this thing together. All right, so we've got our prep work done. We're ready to put the axle hangers here in the rear uh, rails of this thing, Brandon. So let's uh, show these guys how that's done. First, we'll take the brake rotor. Slide onto the axle. And then we'll take the sprocket hub. Face it this way. Slide it on the axle. Transfer the hangers to the car. And then this is a super important part that I feel like we get a lot of calls about, uh, you know, answering the phone here at QRC is it where exactly the holes go um, with the bearing hangers here. One of the most commonly asked questions with this type of thing is Brandon gets the axle in place. So for this car, we're going to go neutral on the axle rails. So we'll go five holes from the back. One, two, three, four, five, as we'll put our first bolt there. It's same thing as the other side. Back here at the workbench, we've got the axle hangers in the car. Brandon, what do we got to do next? 
looks like the hanger hardware and the half inch, and we will tighten the hanger. Keyways, we'll measure one inch longer on the right side than the left side. So it'll be about six inches until the uh, slot at the end of the axle on the right side, and about five inches on the slot on the left side. And then we'll be ready to put in our keyway, and I'll actually measure that right now. And what's the reasoning for the one inch difference? Uh, normally, you have more spacing on the right rear than the left rear, so it allows the hub to. Uh, be in good place on each side when we are done with this step and now you are measuring where this keyway goes and that's where and that I'm gonna make a line both sides and then we will cut it and be ready to put the keyways in and put the collar locks on all right sweet <laughs> All right, so we've got our keyways cut to the right length. What's next? Next, we will take the keyways and the two collar locks and we will go to the car and put them on. Sorry to just keep bugging you. I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page for that area 51. That does have instruments. It's an instrument holder. So people that, you know, might not know who you are, you don't just build these cars, you actually race them and had some pretty good success over the years at, at Red Bluff and Cycling, right? Correct, yeah. It's pretty cool that I uh, have a big passion for these cars, so it's cool to do this every day as well as race them on the weekends and share the knowledge of outlaw car racing. And your shop is, if you've ever been to QRC, if you haven't actually, then uh, you would know that Brandon's shop where his car is held along with the uh, his teammate Darren Spencer, their shop is directly across the parking lot here. So when Brandon goes to work on his stuff, he's not too far away. Did I tighten that side? I think you did tighten it, yeah. We should be good there. Slide this collar over the keyway. That'll keep the rear axle tight left to right by securing these collar locks. I feel like a lot of people get in trouble when they put these things on. They're not, yeah. you know. Just be sure to tighten them evenly. That way you don't pinch the collars the wrong way and that'll cause them to crack. So Basically, yeah, when you when you move it back and forth, right. yeah. And then so. we'll be ready for the axle spacer kit. And we'll just go pretty standard here with spacing. We'll go about two and three quarter on the right side and about inch and a quarter on the left side. Okay. When you pick up your car, you know, whether it's on a pallet or wherever, all this stuff comes in there, the axle spacer kit that you see him putting on right now. And like you said, this is kind of the basic, you know, rear end spacing that all the cars run that come out of this factory. Rear hub to the max. Got our double lock hubs. Tools will be the quarter inch Allen and the perhaps persuasion screwdriver. Now, when we aren't making a video about this kind of thing, how long does it typically take you to put one of these cars together? Uh, can normally get a whole car together, a roller at least, in a work day. So, about eight, nine hours should be pretty average on. Getting a car together. I might need a little more precision. Try off the right side. Sometimes kind of a tight squeeze here. There you go. That's one of those tricks of the trade that Brandon was talking about earlier. Kind of stick that screwdriver in the, the slot there. Kind of widen that double lock hub out and you can squeeze it on there. Sometimes a rubber... Rubber mallet will get the job done as well. And we'll do the same with the left rear. All right, sweet. 
Well, we've got our hubs on, we've got all the other stuff there. We just got one more step to do, and that is the brake caliper. And Brandon's gonna show us how to put this Pro-Lite caliper onto the rear axle here. All right, so right now is a good time to get the rest of our two keyways as well as the caliper and the bolts to uh, tighten it up, as well as two 916 wrenches. So going to the rear of the car, we will take the shorter keyway and place it in the left side, like so. Put the beads toward the hanger. That way, when the hub is on, it has no way to slide out when it's tight and lose that. So we'll slide it on and then grab the caliper and two bolts. Attach it to the caliper mount on the hanger. And then right here we'll be, we'll start tightening everything. So we want to make sure that our rear rotor is lined up inside the caliper. That way there is no brake rub. So we'll start to get this pretty close to tight. As we keep in mind alignment with the rear rotor. So we're real tight that out a little bit how do you know when you're in the sweet spot there uh just basically trial and error you know we'll when it spins pretty pads, good like that without dragons yeah the pads stay uh floating so we'll just slowly tighten these bolts as well as keep alignment straight and once we're tight there check it again real quick we'll slide the keyway in on the sprocket side. Run that over the top. And we'll keep it loose since we don't have a chain or a gear yet. But Yeah, luckily this car will be coming with an engine. We will get that later and we'll put the, the rear gear on there, get the chain lined up for you guys and show you how that goes as well. But for now, it's just a brake or just a, a, a hub here. And then now that we got our quarter inch Allen, we will make sure that all of our hubs are tight. Right rear hub, we'll tighten up the sprocket hub for now, just in case we don't get back to it. We'll tighten up the brake hub. And then double check alignment now that we're tight, it spins freely, and we'll double check that left rear hub. Yeah, those ceramic bearings are nice, man. These things will spin for a while. Last but not least, snap ring pliers and snap ring. to the left rear side of the axle. There we go, man. Check that out. Well, our rear axle is complete here. As you can see, the spacing on both sides here, how everything looks with the brake caliper and the rotor. Uh, Brandon Lachance doing a great job here. Brandon, what are some of the kind of the uh, common misconceptions people have when putting this thing together? Yeah, biggest overview we went over is uh, getting the bearings into the rear caliper, as well as, you know, guessing your distances left to right on where you should cut your keyways. So giving yourself an inch more on the right side compared to the left side, we see we get pretty even spacing um, and room room for movement, uh, you know, and then make sure that make sure that your brake caliper isn't rubbing the rotor. And then uh, one more thing, this'll, this'll leave you plenty safe. You just get some electrical tape. Remember to be sure that the bead of your keyway should be to the hanger side, but we can simply here just get some electrical tape make a couple passes and you'll be plenty safe on both sides. That way you don't lose a keyway and either lose brakes or, you know, lose the keyway on the sprocket side and have no drive anymore. So keeping those, keeping those items in mind, you get the rear axle in the car and one more step down. All right, sweet.